Welcome back, my super fam. Today, we have a dedicated video for our beta who haven't been back since patch 2.4, which, if you didn't remember, was actually since the very start of the year. Wow, makes you kind of wonder how fast time actually flies, right? So with all the changes that have been coming into Genshin Impact, especially after patch 3.0 with Dendro reactions, Beidou herself, who is an Electro character, has have a massive boost. Which is why today we have an updated build for Beidou, especially for those of you who have just got her through the current banner, as well as if you're looking to gear up your Beidou to the next level. And so without further ado, let's just dive right in. First, we'll be going through her skills and talents. Now, I won't be going too in-depth, assuming you've already got the basics of Beidou's kit, but I'll just be covering the most important points so that you do remember her gameplay. In that Beidou's most important skill starts with her E skills. For there, she has a very unique playstyle of being a shield counter and there's two ways you can use this e skill first there is a tap option where you just simply press her e skills and she will just swing her blade dealing electro damage however you can also hold down the e skill where she will lift her weapon up as a shield and once you release it or the duration expires she will deal electro damage what's important to remember though is that Beidou's counter damage increases based on the numbers of time you are hit during your hold skill and it goes up to twice and the reason why this skill is so good is that it is still one of the hardest single hitting elemental skill in the game only second to Lisa at this point in time. The damage can scale up very high so it's very important for us to learn to use her E skill properly which is also one of the flashiest part of her kit and draw many players in using her in the first place. Now with Beidou's first talent it allows her to gain the damage of a full counter if you activate it right before she's about to get hit. So full counter here basically means that she's getting maximum damage from her counter. The window here is quite short so it's kind of like one third of a second but of course as the more you use Beidou you will get used to this counter. And it is important to get the full counter every time too because not only are you able to deal a lot of damage out of that but also it provides her a lot of energy restorations since this is the only part of of Beidou that help her regen. Now her burst is what makes Beidou an amazing character and is sometimes to be considered as one of the best off-field damage dealer in the game. During Beidou's burst there will be Electro surrounding your active character. Now what this does is that it first gives your active character resistance to interruption as well as decrease in damage taken. However what's most important though is that whenever you use your normal attack or charge attack they create a lightning discharge that can jump between between opponents dealing electro damage and that is where it makes Beidou's skills amazing because not only is she able to deal damage to one opponent but she can do it to multiples scaling her overall damage to very high. Now it is not clear in terms of how many jump her burst is able to do. So thanks to Ku Ching Mate, we know that at C0 she will be able to do two jumps which is three targets in total and if you get her to C2 that will be a total of four jumps and four five targets, making her C2 basically the best constellation of Beidou. Now to give you a rough idea of how good Beidou elemental burst actually is, I'll leave Kuching's main table of breaking down her total damage right here. So those are some of the most important points when it comes to Beidou's skill and kit. Now we move on to the advanced sections for you to be aware of whenever you use Beidou. First is that due to Beidou's burst takes advantage a lot in terms of her jumps, Beidou is very good in AoE situations, in that as long as your enemies are close to each other, they don't have to be too grouped, the jump still be activated and deals damage to basically the whole group, which is the reason why it makes Beidou's burst very good and a lot of the time just better than Fischl and Xingqiu in AoE situation. Therefore, generally Beidou will suffer quite a lot of damage loss whenever it comes to a single target situation. Situation. It doesn't mean that she would be bad in single target situation, it's just that there will be quite a lot of damage cut because there won't be any jumps. In terms of Beidou's playstyle, usually she has three playstyles that everyone can choose from, which is first a physical playstyle, next is a on field carry, and then there is the off field support. Physical build was okay before, but generally we just don't use it because it's just a huge 
actual damage loss onto Beidou's burst. But now that Dendro reaction is here, physical build is not going to be viable anymore because that's just a huge, huge damage loss without Beidou's reaction. So the only time you want to use physical is just when you deliberately want to build Beidou that way. Next is on field carry, which she can do reasonably well, but it's not very popular also either because it comes down to player preferences of having Beidou on the field, but also since her burst rely on how fast you're able to do your normal attack damage to trigger her burst jumps, Beidou isn't going to be a reliable character to do that because her normal attack animation is quite slow. So that leaves us the off-field support option which is Beidou's best and it's something that most players just want to stick with. Now in terms of Beidou's burst internal cooldown which is something you do want to take notice of especially if you're going to be focusing on aggravates with Dendro, she still follows the normal internal cooldown rules which is basically once every third hit or basically a 2.5 second cooldown. Therefore Beidou will be able to do aggravates once out of every three hits when it comes to Dendro reactions. Which means of course it is still much better to gear Beidou towards increasing her raw damage instead of fully reaction damage. Next is that remember her burst does snapshot so whenever you're using her with Bennett or any buff whatsoever it will snapshot onto her burst. So do remember to cast all of the buff first before you use her burst in order for Beidou to get all of the buff that she can get. And then do remember guys is that her E skills has rather low cooldown of only 7.5 seconds so that especially if you're playing her as an off field damage dealer you always want to remember to trigger her E skill here and there so that she's able to get off her extra damage as well as good energy regeneration for herself. Otherwise with the high burst cost you will find that sometimes Beidou burst is hard to be on. Moving on to Beidou's best artifacts. There has been a lot of artifacts that's been released since the start of the game for Beidou but up until this point in times the emblem fate set guys is still going to be the best onto Beidou. Main reason being is that this set basically solved Beidou's energy cost issue once and for all as this set itself focused on giving energy recharge plus it focused on giving her burst damage as well. So it has everything that Beidou actually needs. Of course you're going to be losing out a little bit of E skill damage because there won't be any electro damage buff but having her burst up time basically on 100% of the time is the most important thing. Now you can also run other sets like Noblesse which is still one of the best set as well but considering that some of the other support character on your team may already run this you can save Beidou for other artifact sets. And there will be Thundering Fury as well this set is pretty decent and Beidou can also utilize this 4 piece set really well in terms of lowering her E skill cooldown so it's a pretty decent set for her also especially if you're running Beidou as a main carry you're gonna be able to use Beidou's E skill a lot more so you can use this set if you already got something good built out of it. And there's also Thunder Soother and Gladiator set as well but I just don't usually recommend it because Thunder Soother still isn't always consistent plus the set only gives you what you want at a full 4 piece set which we already know that a 4 piece build are usually a lot harder to get good substats which is why the set isn't usually recommended. Now the most important thing though is gonna be the artifact stats. Now if you're using the Emblem Fate set then we'll be going ahead with Energy Recharge Sands because of course this set will benefit you on a lot of energy recharge. Usually for Beidou to get her burst comfortably up she would require at least around 160 energy recharge and above with Electro Resonance on team. Otherwise most of the time she will be an off field support therefore she won't be the character to be actively getting the energy particles. For the cup we'll be going with Electro Cup and then Circlet will be crit as usual. If you're using Thundering Fury set then you can use Attack Sands and then focus as much as you can on getting energy recharge onto your substats as well of course as crit rate as well but without good energy recharge substats Beidou's energy recharge issues is gonna be there. And of course as we've mentioned we won't be using physical build but if you still want to use your Beidou as physical carry then we'll be going with a physical cup. 
Onto Beidou's best weapon, she actually has a lot of options. First off being the Serpent Spine. Now of course this is a battle pass option so it's only lock if you do buy the battle pass. But I do bless that every one of us should have at least one copy of this because this weapon is just really good and rivals that as a 5 star weapon sometimes. Due to the fact that it gives quite a lot of crit rate with very good passive and Beidou can utilize all this very well since she is an off field damage dealer she will be making use of this passive buff without fearing to get hit. Next option will be the 5 star option of the wolf gravestone, her general overall good options as well because it provides your team a 40% attack increase. There's also the unforged that Beidou can utilize pretty well. It only falls behind the wolf gravestone a little bit so if you do have this on your account Beidou would love to use it. After that in terms of the normal 4 star option we have the Akumara this weapon is locked behind Gacha though so it can be a little bit hard to get but if you do have it on your account it's a very decent option for Beidou. After that we can have the Sea Lord of course this is only an event weapon so if you did miss it you don't have to worry too much but it is a very cute meme option that Beidou can use and very fitting of her playstyle so it is not a bad option. If you don't have any other weapon then the prototype is still a very decent weapon for Beidou. It only focuses on attack percent of course so you do want to balance out her energy recharge as well as crit ratio there. The rain slasher is also very good as well but of course it is locked behind gacha and since we'll be running Beidou with aggravate most of the time it's a solid option that you can build Beidou on just need to keep in mind her energy recharge level as usual. And then of course I don't usually recommend the energy recharge option but if you are really lacking on energy recharge for your Beidou then the Favonius Great Star is still a decently good option for her because not only it gives her a very good energy recharge but also gives your team very good energy particles as well. Moving on to Beidou's constellation which is a pretty important section as well since many of us is going to be having her cons after the banner pool. Her C1 gives her an extra shield whenever she is in her burst that absorbs up to 16% of Beidou's max HP for 15 seconds so technically a whole duration of her burst. This is a pretty nice addition for your character to not get hit so it's there to give you a bit of bonus. C2 is of course what we have discussed in terms of her best constellation. Now of course C0 Beidou is very viable already but her best potential is unlocked after C2. So I do wish you luck that every one of you get at least Beidou C2. Her C3 gives her bonus in terms of her E skills and C4 just give Beidou a normal attack an additional instance of 20% electro damage so that gives her a bit of bonus right there. However her C6 here is pretty decent in that there's gonna be electro resistant decrease of 15% for your surrounding opponent during the duration of her burst which is one of her rare skills in terms of resistance shred in the game and especially with electro resistant decrease her burst is getting a decent buff not to mention your other electro character dealing additional damage as well. So overall her C2 and her C6 is some of the constant that you want to have onto your Beidou. Alright so that should be everything in terms of Beidou's kit. Now we hop onto some of the most important section of Beidou which is her team build. In the past before Dendro reaction arrived Beidou has some pretty decent teams where generally she will run with a double electro resonance and Fischl is usually the partner that runs along with her for Fischl is one of the best characters in terms of energy regen that complex complements Beidou really well and then afterward we usually have a two flexible character where you can use it with any of your main DPS character as well as any buffer that you want. So for example we can have Bennett here as attack buffer and then Shangling for extra off field damage and overload reaction. However Beidou's overall popular team comp was Taser where we run her in electro charge team and then she's of course popular in geo reaction team as well where if you have been using Ningguang you would most definitely have Beidou on your team before. However now that Dendro reaction have arrived Beidou's team have mostly shifted towards Dendro reactions and of course her overall best team is still gonna be Quicken Aggravate where you can run her team with member as Kuching, Dendro MC and Kuki Shinobu. We're having a triple electro character right here because of course right now we don't have a Dendro healer and Dendro MC 
right now have her burst staying up on the field for 15 seconds. She is a pretty viable character to carry your team of Dendro Reactions application. So having only Dendro MC on the team is totally fine. And then all of your team can basically focus dealing electro damage and electro reactions. Next, a very good option as well is Hyper Bloom where you have Kokomi in Kukishinobu's place. But of course, you generally want to have Kokomi on your account account which not everyone have at this point. So Sing Chu can be a decent replacement as well due to the fact that Beidou and Sing Chu have damage decrease so they can support your overall team pretty well. And so guys Beidou is usually an underrated character who has a lot of potential. Now that she has been back after a very long time since patch 2.4 I hope that you're able to get her on your account and then try to build her and test her out because especially in AoE situation guys and a dendro reaction buff beidou is a lot better than she has been even though before she is an absolutely amazing character already and so i hope that this video have been able to help you build your beidou better if you do have any question leave it down in the comment section and i will get to you there if you're new to the channel guys be sure to subscribe to my channel and join my discord server as i usually hold a lot of giveaways to help you get your desired character and so with that guys i wish you a super day and I will catch you on my next video.